B'shem Hashem Na'asevin Asliyah. So we are continuing in Halachot of, uh, of Asher Yatzar, in Yachot Yosef, Siman Zayin, Seif Dalet. Hashoteh, Mashkot Kharifim, Vahadavar Gorem Lo, Sheitzarek Le... Okay, so we, we discussed last week um, the different situations when a person would need to make Asher Yatzar. And we said, you know, does a person need to make Asher Yatzar if they give blood? And we said, no. Or does a person need to make Asher Yatzar if he's taken medication which, which makes him go to the restroom many times? Because it's kind of unnatural. Does that make it so that he doesn't make Asher Yatzar? We said, no, he still makes Asher Yatzar. You still do. Because, because your system is still working. The pipeline. If, right when it when you have the feeling and you go you come out you make hashir atar. right so now he says a person that drinks anything that's uh, you know kharif like spicy or uh, or you know different kinds of beverages basically beverages that would make him go many times to the bathroom mevarech hashir atar. Achar kol pa'am. He makes asher yatsar after every single time. Right? As many times as a person goes, you make asher yatsar. A person that, God forbid, has, God forbid, kidney stones. And he needs to go to the restroom many times. And when he does, it's with pain. Does that person make asher yatsar? Or, or not only that, it, it hurts, and it's very little. The halacha is that they still make asher yatsar, even for a drop. Because again, the pipe is working. And we still need to thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu for being able to go to the restroom. Even though at that point it's painful, but it's still working. Af mishenatan kitzat meraglaim levdika, even a person that has given, you know, a urine sample, and he didn't really feel that he needs to go, but he needed to give a little bit for a urine sample, he still makes Asher Yatsar. I, as we said, huh? As we said, next halacha is someone, um, oh no. If someone, God forbid, um, goes to the bathroom and there's blood, it's bloody, God forbid, or, or there's a lot of blood in the urine. In that, in that way, the person does not make an Asher Yatsar because that's usually not such a good sign. So then, you know, in that sense, we don't make Asher Yatsar. The person does not make Asher Yatsar. Now, someone, God forbid, that has lo alenu barminan that has um, what do you call these that like in a hospital let's say there are some people that have surgeries and they have to attach something to them catheter. right a catheter right somebody that has a catheter attached to them and urination is going into a sac right that make that person makes asher yatsar every time they feel that they're done. Because sometimes they don't know if they're, if they're making or not. If they feel that they just went and it's done, they make Asher Yatsar. And a person that doesn't feel that they just went, he looks at the sack and he sees that, you know, he just stopped, he just finished going, he, make, he makes Asher Yatsar. He or she would make Asher Yatsar. Now this is all, um, um, this is all making sure that the clothes are clean, it's not smelly, the body is not, the body is clean, because if it's not, we're not allowed to make a bracha. We shouldn't make a bracha if we're, you know, if there's a bad smell around us or the clothes are, 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 are soiled in a way, we should not make a bracha. 
ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, שהכל נקרא בדברו. אוקיי, נאו. Let's say a person had a fruit. How much of a fruit do we have to eat in order to be chayav, obligated to make bore nefashot after a fruit? When we eat food, we, there's an after, <coughs> after blessing. So for things like fruits, there's bore nefashot, except for the seven fruits, you know, the fruits of Eretz Yisrael that have al Regular fruits, apples, cucumbers, bananas. You make a bore nefashot. Person has to have a kazait, which is 27 grams of a fruit, in order to be chayav, obligated to make a bore nefashot. Now a person had a kazait, 27 grams of banana, and now he needs to make bore nefashot. But before they make bore nefashot, he needs to go to the bathroom. And after coming out of the bathroom, now he's obligated to make asher yatsar. So now he needs to make bore nefashot and asher yatsar. Which one comes first? Yaktim levarech brikat asher yatsar. He or she should make asher yatsar first. Why? Because we have a general rule. Whatever is more common and more um, frequent, that's the bracha that we make first. So a person goes to the bathroom more times during the day than we eat. That's just natural. <laughs> Some people are shaking their head. If you're eating more than going to the restroom, <laughs> how many times a day do we eat a meal? Do we sit down to eat? <laughs> okay. Well, naturally, a person should be going to the bathroom much more than that. Yes, you should be drinking a lot of water during the day. That's you know very healthy to be drinking water during the day to, to get rid of hydrate and also get rid of everything that's been processing in your body. That's what actually brings everything out. So, Asher Yatar comes first. And then, Borer Nefashot. Let's say the person, even if he went to the bathroom and he forgot to make Asher Yatar, and he, then he ate, and now he needs to make, then he ate, and now he needs to make a Boron Fashot. He still, <coughs> bless you, he still makes Asher Yatsar first. In this scenario, we said, he wasn't eating right now. He went to the bathroom, he didn't make Asher Yatsar that. And then he decided to eat. He had an apple, right? Now he wants to make Boron Fashot. He still doesn't make Boron Fashot first. He first makes Asher Yatsar and then make Bore Nefashot. What's the reason for that? That you do Asher Yatsar and Noma Asher Yatsar. That person needs to do the bathroom before they say um, Rafat or not. What? That... That somebody has to first do the bathroom before they say Bore Nefashot. Any bracha, if a person really feels that they need to go to the bathroom, they shouldn't make brachot until they go to the bathroom. Even if, uh, is just Again, if it's if it's if it's in a way that you need to go, you need to go first. If it's just like whatever you want to go, then then not. But still, Asher Yatsar comes first. Aval imirakin However, if he's if you're having a meal, a full meal with bread. You're sitting down, you've made hamotzi, you're, you're, you're having a full meal. First, you make brikat hamazon, and then afterwards you make asher yatsar. This is one of the times that it's different. So if you've, if you've just had pizza, okay, and then you, in the middle of your meal, you went to the bathroom, you came out, you make brikat hamazon first, and then you make asher yatsar. Because brikat hamazon is mido oraita. Berkat Amazon is a Torah law, and that takes precedent, right? Then you make Asher Yatsar, and then you have bread. That's the best way to do it, to not fall into that, you know, category. What? But then, however, however, if you feel that you're going to forget after Berkat Amazon, you're going to forget, which quite frequently happens. 
you know, because we have so much kavana when we say Birkat Hamazon, you know, you, when you go to those worlds and come back, you know, you pass, some people even forget their own name, you know, because of all that kavana and the kedusha that goes around us. So, um, people make Birkat Hamazon, you might forget to make Hashar Yatsar. In that sense, if you feel you're going to forget to make Hashar Yatsar, then make Hashar Yatsar first, and then Birkat Hamazon, so that you don't forget to make Hashar Yatsar. If you're eating cake, and then you need to go to a restroom, before you go to the restroom, make, um, um, oh, you went to the restroom, you first make also ala mechia, and then you make asher yatsar. Because according to many of the poskim, many halachic authorities, um, uh, um, ala mechia is also midoraita. It's from the Torah, for cake. So, same with Birkat Amazon. If you go to the restroom, you need to make Asher Yatsar, but you had cake, you first make Ala Mechia Vala Kalkala, and then you make Asher Yatsar. But for cake, for flour, <coughs> for cake. Oh, not for cake, no, for those, no. Cake is different because it's eating cake, enough cake to make a Bracha Karona is Midoraita also because it's also satiating in that sense. Does pie fall into cake? My <laughs> <laughs> um, I've never seen a pie to jump that far to fall into a cake. <laughs> I'm kidding. Pie, pie, yeah, I mean, but you have to be careful with pie because if it's a, like an apple pie, a lot of it is fruit inside, so you have to have, the cake has to be the measurement of Baracha Akrona, which is 27 grams. So you had you had to have had 27 grams of the cake part. 27. Not 27 grams altogether. You understand? So if you have 27 grams of cake of the pie, then you make ala uh, But if you take a little piece that's like 40 grams, but like it's all apple, then you don't make uh, ala mechia. Cookies also. You have 27 grams of mezonot. Yes. No, you make mezonot. You just made mezonot. You don't make warna fashot anymore. No. That's why a lot of people are very machmir that if they're going to eat cake, they make sure to eat 27 grams so they can make uh, alam khiyah. Huh? Yeah, but it's not a lot. I mean, depending on what kind of cake. Yeah, if you have those Pesach cakes that are just fudge, 27 grams, I think you have to like two truckloads to make 27 grams of that stuff. It's like puff powder. <laughs> the ones that you put in your mouth and you're like, did I just put something in my mouth? <laughs> just poof. <laughs> a whole what of a cake? Right. So before the person goes to the hospital, they should definitely make ala <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> No, no. <laughs> if the person has more than 216 grams, then it's Birkat Amazon. Yeah, more than 216 grams, then the person should make, uh, uh, they should make Merikat um, Hamazon and, uh, and, and kind of start thinking about, you know, dietary laws. And <laughs> Kidding. Yeah, flour. But then it, it depends. Now we're going into a whole lot of uh, different kinds of laws. You know, I don't want to get into that because it's very complicated. Uh, um, it's very complicated. I don't, I don't. You have a question about Asher Atzar? Let's say you have a piece that's like a hundred grams and you're only you only eat one, you're only planning on eating one piece and you have more. 
Now you make a, now you make hamot. Uh, now you make a brikat hamazon. If you know you're going to have 216 no, grams, no, 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 right? So okay, so that's what I'm saying. If you know, then you know, right? But if you, right, but if you didn't know, and then and then you were like, oh, <laughs> sweetheart, that was amazing cake. It was so good. I didn't want anybody else to have any because I would have been <coughs> embarrassed. <laughs> so I ate the whole thing. I'm kidding. So I ate the whole thing. Then you you do make um, um, birkat hamazon, like 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 these mazono threads that that you know according to Sefaradim, some there are some loaves of bread that are made with so much sugar and egg and they're so you you make mazonot on that. You make if you have 216 grams of that, then you make hamotzi, right? Now, if a person if a person goes to the bathroom, comes out and did not make a yatsar, and, and and totally forgot, and forgot whether he needs to, didn't think about going to the bathroom again, and then all of a sudden now he needs to go to the bathroom again, and 72 minutes that has not passed yet, as we said, now he goes to the bathroom again, and then he comes out and he realizes oh. I had gone to the bathroom before also, I didn't make Asher Yatsar, I, was, I didn't make Asher Yatsar on the first time that I went to the bathroom. Now, in this scenario, does this person make two Birkat Amazons or one? Now remember, because in the middle, he completely took his mind off of it. He had this, yeah. I said Asher Yatsar, I'm sorry. Asher Yatsar. Does he make it once or twice? Everybody says once? Okay, so it's a machlok at poskim. <laughs> so it actually is, we have both ways. Some hold, like the... Um, the Hatari Shonim and the Shulchan Aruch, they hold that you make Hashem Yatzar twice. Right, which is, which, which is yes, I mean, it... it might sound strange, but the Shulchan Aruch and a lot of Rishonim hold that you make Asher Yatzar twice in this scenario because you took your mind off of it completely, you had completely forgotten, and you didn't even need to go to the bathroom anymore. It was like, you know, so it becomes like two different actions. So you make two, uh, two Asher Yatzars. However, there are a lot of Acharonim, a lot of Chachamim afterwards that argue on this, uh, uh, that, that they hold that you should only make Asher Yatsar one time. Right? Therefore, because there's a machloket about whether you make Asher Yatsar one time or two times, we have a general rule, and that general rule is what? Safek barachot la'akel. Whenever you have a safek, whenever you have a question about a bracha, and not you, whenever there is, when there is a question, when there is a, a question in halacha by poskim, what bracha should be made, or should a bracha be made or not, then we don't make the bracha. Therefore, in some cases, yes, but, but let's stick to what we're talking post scheme right now. We do, but there are certain times that when we have a lot going against it, and when the Chachamim feel that even the Shulchan Aruch themselves might have changed their mind if uh, there's a lot that's involved. So, especially since there's a lot of acharonim that argue on that, right? So, therefore, when it's when it's God forbid, you know, a uh, 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 a a risk of saying Hashem's name in vain, then we do we go safek barachot lahakel, and it's best not to do it twice, and do it just once. This actually, this halakha was a, it's a very intense halakha. It's a lot of uh, different alex on it. If a person went to the bathroom, used the bathroom, and then they forgot to make asher yatsar. And after some time, less than 72 minutes, he needs to go again. There are those that hold. Before going again, make asher yatsar for the first time. V'achar kach, then afterwards go to the bathroom, and then say Asher Yatsar. And there are those that say, if it comes a scenario like this, go to the bathroom and then just make uh, make one Asher Yatsar for both of them. 
if you really badly need to go. If it's just, you know, like I said. If someone forgets to make an Ashriyatra and it's not sure to do, can we also just walk out of the bathroom and have them in mind? Yes, we can do that as well. And the Benish Chai holds that the person, um, the, the person should go to the bathroom and then just make one Ashriyatra. Since they already need to go to the bathroom again, just go again and make one Ashriyatra for both. Somebody that came out of the restroom. He didn't have water to wash his hands. We said this before. He cleans his hands with whatever he possibly can find to clean his hands. And he makes a shari yatsar. If somebody has a question whether we made a bracha a shari yatsar or not. Right? This usually does not happen. When does this ever happen? Has it ever happened to you? You come out of the bathroom. Ten minutes later you don't know if you made a shari yatsar or not. <laughs> what? What happens? Really? Okay. So I show you a even more. People like come out of the restroom, especially since it's so many times a day. Sometimes you just mix up. You don't know if you made a or not, because, and sadly, uh, it's because we don't have enough kavana, right? So, person doesn't know if they made a or not. Then he can make hashir yatsar, but without saying Hashem's name. You know, Baruch Atah Hashem, Elokeinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Yatsar Atah Adam. Because you're still thanking Hashem, but you just can't say Hashem's name. So they should, you should say it without Hashem's name. Ach yachol leharher habracha belibo, af mitoch sidur. Or what you could do is, you could take a sidur and just, you know, have the bracha in mind, reading it with your eyes. So you have kavanah that you're doing that bracha. So now, the person does not know if they made the bracha or not, as we said, as you just asked, and somebody else just used the restroom, they came out, you don't know if you made the bracha or not, you can ask them to have you in mind and make asher yatsar for you. You find yourself in the middle of bracha of asher yatsar. You're making asher yatsar, you go, Baruch Atah Hashem, Elokeinu melech ha'olam asher yatsar et ha'adam b'chokhmah La'achar she'itchil After you've already started and you've said asher yatsar et ha'adam b'chokhmah You heard Kaddish or Kedusha You're in a shul and they just made Kaddish Or they just started doing Nakdishach, the middle of Mincha They're doing Chazarat Hashatz or middle of Shacharit And they just started Nakdishach Can you stop in the middle and answer Umayn? Or... Can you stop in the middle and answer? Or can you stop and do Kudesh, Kudesh, Kudesh? Can you do that? What? No, if you're on the moon. <laughs> no, you're in, you're in the middle of Asher Yatsar. You just, you just came out of the restroom and you said, Baruch Atah Hashem, Elokeinu Menech Haram, Asher Yatsar et Ha'adam Mechokhmah. And then they started these skadavis, skadash, meiraba. Can you make? Can you say umayn? Now, asher yatsar is considered lachar shi tchil b'tivat asher yatsar v'shama kadosh ulmishda posek v'one kemo b'kriyat shema uvrichoteha. You stop and you answer amen just like when you're in the middle of the bracha of kriyat shema. As we said before, the bracha of kriyat shema. Because it's a long bracha of hoda'ah, then in the middle you could answer uh, amens and kedusha. Shedim rikad asher yatsar kebirchot aruchot. It's just like these long, other long brachot that you could stop in the middle to answer amen and kedusha. But which amenim do we answer? Only the five first ones. Always remember that. It's the, when you're in the middle of a uh, when you're in the middle of a tefillah and you have permission to answer amen, we only answer the five first amenim, right? Kedusha is going to be kadosh and baruch. No, no, no. Uh, meaning kadosh, 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 Hashem, Samvodu, Menacharas, Kevodo, and baruch. Right. 
you say the whole <laughs> you say the whole sentence. But we don't say Yimloch Hashem Yolam Yorachzion Levador. We don't say the Yimloch. We only say those two. Yes, same thing. But now, Ve'im Chatam Baruch Hashem. Now, if you were ending Asher Yatzar and you just said Baruch Hashem and you're about to say Rofechol Basar of Afrila Asot, finish it fast and then answer. You can't stop anymore. You got that? So the second Baruch Hashem that you're about to say, Rufechol Basar Mavli Asot, don't stop there anymore. Then you can't stop because that's the closing of the bracha. In the middle, it's like you're in the middle of this long bracha. Fine. But during the closing of the bracha, you don't make you don't you don't answer anymore. So okay. All right, we'll we'll, we'll hold it here actually. This is a good spot. I have a general question. If somebody's in the middle of a lacha, could they answer Nakusha? No. But you could have it in mind, put it in your mind, no? If, if the person that is davening for the amud, if the chazan is somebody that is an expert and has kavana for everybody when he's doing it, that's number one. Number two is... He waits for everyone to finish saying Kadosh, 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 and then he starts saying it out loud in a way that everybody hears it and he himself has Kavana, he can stop. But if it's somebody that's just random and he, they probably don't know how to have Kavana and uh, while everybody's saying Kadosh, 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 he's already right? Then you don't need to stop. Have Kavana and just keep davening. Make sense? Yeah. Right, you do not. Unless you're at the last, uh, unless you get to the Yihyul over there you could answer. Uh, I don't want to get into that stuff because we're not doing it inside, so it's very, actually, it's very confusing stuff. Okay. So we are, we are learning about bitachon in Hashem. We are learning about trusting in Hashem. It's something that we need on a daily basis, on minute, 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 minute to minute basis. Trusting in Hashem. And last week we touched based on some stuff. There's a story that's brought down about a merchant that at a young age decided to go out of town to do business not from a wealthy family he knew that he needs to work hard to make ends meet and little by little he starts making a nice life for himself he starts building his business from ground up we all know people like that Baruch Hashem and he starts doing good for himself. However, you know, and this is a nice religious man. Little by little, because of his business responsibilities, he starts kind of slacking off on his ruchniyut, on his spiritual responsibilities. Oh, you know. One shachrit in shul lost here, one, you know. Late afternoon, Friday afternoon, coming home right before Shabbat. And then little by little, he's literally losing out on prayer every day and losing out Shabbat. It's very unlike him. One day his Rebbe sees him. And he starts to give it to him. His mentor, his teacher, who is very disappointed in him, starts to give it to him. What are you doing with your life? What is this? Was this, this, is this? Is this what you're here for? This is it? This is your life? You've completely put your life for grabbing more money from every corner that you can possibly find? This is what your life is about? This has become your purpose? You've put everything else aside so you can make another dime? That's what your purpose was all along? 
This is what you wanted in life? To just amass more and more and more? And he just gives it to him and he gives it to him. And this guy starts feeling it. And he starts going back like, yeah, I never wanted this. You know, I always had my religion. I always had my beliefs. What am I doing with myself? He gets so upset. He takes out all of his money from his pockets and just throws all of it on the floor. And he starts to cry and he says, Rebbe, you're right. I'm sorry I was a fool. I'm not doing it anymore. It's dirty and it's filthy. And he starts spitting on the money. Rebbe looks at him and goes, have you gone mad? Why are you throwing your money on the floor for? Pick it up. Who throws money on the ground? It's your hard-earned money. So now the guy goes, Rebbe, I'm sorry. I'm, you're really confusing me here. Right? Orale. <laughs> what do you want me to do? <laughs> what is... What are you asking of me over here? What do you expect of me? You're first telling me I'm wasting my life. I've put everything into, into emptiness and I'm searching for money all the time. And you're right. I'm, I, I've totally lost track of what really matters in life. You're right. And I did it all. Why? For money. You're right. So I'm agreeing with you. Now that I agree with you, you're looking at me like I'm nuts. What do you expect me to do? So his Rebbe looks at him and he says, you have to understand, even if you were to go back to a life of spirituality, how are you going to make ends meet? You still need money in life. You still need to eat. You still need to support a family. You need to have a good, good head on your shoulders. You still need the money. I'm not telling you that money is bad. I'm not telling you that going after business is wrong. That's not what I'm saying at all. But he says, let me allow me to explain it to you through a story. So he tells him, long, long time ago, there were two friends. And these two friends had this special ability. Their special ability was, they were farmers. And once in a while, they would have a dream at night, both of them. It was like a Ruach HaKodesh, a heavenly message, that would tell them that year what would happen to produce. And it would tell them when they should plant, when they should harvest, when to take crops. That's what they would see in a dream. And they always, always knew when to plant, when not to plant, when to harvest, when not to harvest. And they were doing great. No one understood why they have such atzlacha. They're always, like, they always miss the floods. They would have dreams about there's going to be a flood in this month. They wouldn't plant. Whoever would plant, the flood would take all the seeds and they had to replant again. They would wait after the flood and then start planting until one time they had a dream. And in the dream, they understand that all the produce in the world is going to be tainted. Something's going to be in the water source of this month or something's going to happen where all the fruits and vegetables, all the produce is going to be tainted and it's going to be poisoned. And what is it going to do? It's going to make everybody crazy. Everyone's going to be mad. Everyone's going to be crazy. So these two wake up. And they don't know what to do. Everyone's going to go crazy. There is no way we can stop this. There is no way we can stop everyone in the world. It's bound to happen. Here's the question though. What do we do? Do we wait and plant for the next water irrigation or whatever it was for it to, to water our lands so that will be normal? Or do we just go with the flow? You might say it's crazy, but it's not, especially in today's society. Why? 
Because if you're normal, you might actually look crazy. Because if everybody else is crazy around you, you're the only two normal ones, are you really normal? It's a good question. They felt, if we're going to be the only two normal people, we're not going to feel normal for too long. Because everybody else is going to be acting a certain way. We're going to be the only ones acting differently. So who's really crazy? What do we do? So they make a decision. And that is, they tell each other, we're going to plant at a later time. We're going to have healthy produce for ourselves. However, every day we're going to tie a belt really tight on our bodies That will be a constant reminder that, no, I'm the normal one. Everyone else has gone crazy. I'm different. I'm not the crazy one. They're the crazy ones. I'm normal. I will always remember. So the Rav turns to his Talmud, to his student. The rabbi says, we are on this earth. We live in this craziness. We live in this society. We are living in this chaos. And once in a while, we actually have to act within this madness. We need to. We need to also act like, yes, we go to work, we do work, we have businesses, we got to run a life, we have to make money. Yes, we have to begin. We have to get involved in this chaos also. But that's not to forget that that's not what you're here for. You only do that so that you could survive in this world. So that they don't look at you like you're crazy, so to speak. It's your survival skills. You need to do that. But not to forget who you are, where you came from, what you really need to be doing. And that belt, the number one belt we have is what? Tefillin. The mitzvot that we do. The mitzvot that we do is that sign that reminds us every day on a daily basis, I'm different. Yes, I have to get involved in the business world. Yes, I have to get involved in the school world. I need to do these things because I'm a part of this world. Hashem has put me on this earth and has involved me in these earthly matters. That's the norm here. That's what I need to do here. That's what everybody has to do. But to think that that is my sole purpose in life, then I just had the same produce. I lost track of what I'm here for. Then that becomes an entire life of loss. Harab of Adi Yosef, in one of his in one of his speeches, it's got a long story. In one of his speeches, when he talks about one of his sefarim, he says, after 120 years, when he would have gone to Shamaim and he would not have written that sefer, he said, in Shamaim they would ask me for it. They would judge me for it and say, I sent you down to that earth. You're missing a sefer. You were supposed to write this book. Where is it? We all have a purpose especially for Am Yisrael, is not to amass more money. and We need to do that in order to be a part of civilization, to survive, to, to, to provide for our families, but not to think that that's the whole purpose of life. Because God forbid, no one wants to be that old person and turn back and say, now what? Baruch Amen